helping you participate in Zion Worship Center ministry service this beautiful morning as we rejoice to be among the living. As I always say, each morning when we awake, we need to praise him with a song in our heart and thanking him for his mercy and grace. Again, we welcome you to Zion Worship Center Ministries located at 2131 Pine Street on Wyandotte, Michigan. Telephone 734-899-7078. You can find us throughout the week on most social medias, platforms with daily prayer at 7 a.m., prayer on the wall with Dr. Kadisha Henry and Elder Frederick Williams, Tuesday, 6 p.m. for prayer on Zoom conference line with Minister Robin White. You don't have to be a member of Zion to join us on the prayer line. Everyone is welcome to join us, to participate, to pray, and to be with us. Pastor Mark with the Fisherman Tape every other Friday on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. for Bible study on Zoom with Pastor Mark and myself. Consider the matter with our Bishop Desert Need Jeanette Williams White whenever the Holy Spirit puts a matter on her heart to share with God's children. And Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live. And immediately, after our adult services, our youth services with Pastor Valerie White, a wonderful opportunity where our children have a fun way to learn about Jesus and political science studies where they learn and earn money about our government and the things that affect their lives in this country. So join us, adults are welcome too. We ask that you prepare yourself now for the word of God from a dynamic, dynamic woman of God. She becomes energized when speaking on God's word and the salvation of his children. As I have said many times in the past, this woman of God needs no introduction. She is known by her work in the kingdom and her complete desire to save souls. She has a genuine love for all of God's people, wherever they are. Her work is not known just among the saints, but with her clients in the justice system, strangers, backsliders, and all who will listen and take heed to the word of God. Always on the wall praying when the rest of us are sleeping or going about our daily routine. God has truly blessed us with a woman of much wisdom and knowledge who is willing to share with all who will hear her. So relax and let's open our minds and open our hearts and set our souls for an exciting and revealing experience and hear the infallible word of God come forth. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our Bishop designee, Attorney Jeanette Williams White. Let's all welcome her on this day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, saints, and to all my father's children, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We send a shout out to our uh, interim presiding bishop, Bishop Dennis, and the bishops of the fellowship, uh, and to all of God's children, just everywhere, to you at home as an individual, those that I know and those that I don't know, you're still a part of the kingdom and God's family. And I send blessings and greetings to you. We have been dealing with the, uh, the mind, the body, uh, and the spirit. And so it's going to take us a little while to work through uh, this area and break it down. So we want you to go and subscribe uh, to our YouTube page and you can pick up these sermons, not only uh, myself, but Pastor Mark and other uh, ministers, you'll find them there that have been guests of Zion uh, Worship Center. They're there, but we want you to click and subscribe. You all know uh, the social media sites, how you do it, but uh, in particular, this series will be there. We have other series also. So please do go to our YouTube page, Zion Worship Center, 
If you put it in, you'll find it. If you put in Jeanette Williams White, it'll come up. We're in Wyandotte, Michigan. We are the only Zion Worship wine dot uh website so you can find us that way and we thank god for all of it uh we're here on the battlefield and we're praying now in the name of the lord jesus that this word goes down solid into good ground that it may sprout up at its appointed time as seed for a harvest. Now I'm going to shout out to you at different points as I begin to bring this lesson this morning where you can put an X in your Bible, little periods, whatever you do to follow the teaching. Uh, I want you to follow us in this series. And my prayer is that it's going to open up your eyes and give you a greater insight for living for the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I want you to go to uh, Luke uh, chapter 4 and verse 18. Let's back up. Let's start at 17 and read through 18. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is Jesus in the synagogue, and he's about to read. And when he has opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive uh, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, when you go to Isaiah, there is further reading as to this scripture. Uh, the point I want to make there, and you can just write this as a side note, uh, the time that Isaiah speaks to has not yet come uh, in the time of Jesus, nor has this scripture been totally fulfilled because Jesus has not returned. But that's another in-depth line of study. And I don't have time to deal with that today, but I want you to note that comment and to dig it in and dig out for yourself. Now, the four gospels, when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four gospels present a fourfold view of the life of Christ. That is what we are trying to get to, to be more and more like him, the life of Christ. Now recorded in uh, Greek manuscripts between AD 60 and 90. Now you wanna know the time period and the fact that this is recorded in Greek manuscripts between AD 60 and 90. Now, you know, the Hebrews spoke Hebraic. So we have the breakdown of uh, the Hebraic scripture as to the Septuagint, the Greek study of Hebrew and the interpretation. So another note, note that as you are studying, that you have to be mindful of who's talking, when they are talking, and also where they are talking. Now, the four gospels, all four, they build up on the genuine historical tradition and preserve different as to aspects, as to time, as to their perceptions, of what they are writing. That is important, very important. The basic purpose of the gospels is to present the gospel message, the good news of our redeemer and savior. The gospel presents Jesus as the Messiah of Israel. Now we know that he is our Messiah, but when you look 
at the writers, you're going to get different perspectives. That is why we teach at Zion. We teach all four gospels and we try to teach them uh, succinctly, meaning at the same time, so you can see the different perspectives of the writers. The gospel is about the son of God and the savior of this world. So he didn't come just to say uh, Greek, uh, Hebrew, Africans, African-Americans, uh, Caucasians, Italians. He came as savior of this world, knowing that we all belong to God. I know some of us can get on each other's nerves sometimes, and we have different political positions and, and different thought processes, all of that. But be mindful, we all belong to God. Now, John 20, 32, uh, 31, the gospels were written so that their readers would come to believe in Christ and receive eternal life. This is what the gospel was written for. The view Jesus as Lord of glory, who is presently alive, and he is active in heaven. We Pentecostal people, we love to say, and he returned to his father and sits on the right hand of his father and makes intercession for us. And then we speak to the Holy Spirit, huh? And the Holy Spirit will take back to heaven that, that we in our little minds don't have the opportunity to be able to articulate, especially when scientists have concluded that we use only a third of our brain's capacity. Now, the title of this scripture, our text is, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. What I want you to note is, I want you to take it and do a little twist. The spirit of the Lord is in me. Now, when Isaiah first wrote this scripture, Isaiah was speaking, some say, uh, about himself as he began to do this writing, along with speaking to the un coming Jesus Christ. Now, I, I believe we've settled the argument that Jesus Christ is divinity. He is God. He came wrapped in flesh through his mother Mary's womb. No man had no part of it. It was divinity. It was his birth was divine. He was full of, he is the Holy Spirit. When the babies met in their mother's womb, John's mother and Mary met, the babies leap. The Bible teaches us indicatively that the Holy Spirit noted the Holy Spirit. Oh God, I can hardly sit in my seat. They leaped in their mother's wombs. They were born filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to challenge your thinking. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus reads this same scripture. Don't you know he came here as divine? So when we read and study, we cannot take scripture necessarily literally. But we got to dig a little deeper and let the Holy Ghost reveal to you what is being said. The Holy Spirit was from the beginning. The Holy Spirit is a part of the triune God, has always been. We don't have an argument there. At least I don't have an argument there. In eternity, there's no beginning, there's no ending. God is just God. So here we have the manifestation of the divinity in Jesus Christ who comes through his mother's womb, feel with the Holy Ghost, come through his mother's womb as divine. And so the same Holy Spirit that he says the comforter will come 
when I leave, my father will send back the comforter. So the comforter has come. That's Acts chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come and the Holy Spirit dwell in men. That's why I said, now you want to say the spirit of the Lord is in me. See, it's got to be in you. In the Old Testament, being upon men, they were unable to keep themselves walking in a holy lifestyle. Some of us baptized believers even today, baptized with the Holy Ghost, have difficulty keeping a holy lifestyle. Why? Because keeping a holy lifestyle requires a consistent repentance. It requires a consistent lamenting. Oh, my God. It requires consistent time laying in the presence of God. It consists of the word of God all night long going into your spirit. When your mortal body relaxes and it has gone off into a sleep, yet your spirit is alive. Remember, we're dealing with the soul. The spirit uh, and the body, the mind, the soul is the same. So we, we're dealing with those three components. We brought it to you last week, and we talked about how all three must be in unity with God. Now, so then we hear the gospel is presented this way. There are four portraits, if you would, of Jesus. You have Matthew. Why am I going through this? Because I want to deal with your mind. Matthew, he writes as a Hebrew. He's a tax collector. He has a Hebraic mindset in his writing. When we look at Mark, he's a travel companion of Paul and Peter. He didn't walk with Jesus. He writes from a Roman mindset. Then we look at Luke, Paul's physician, and his missionary. He writes from a Greek mentality. Then we have John, the interpretation of the facts of Jesus' life, rather than a presentation of his facts in a historical sequence or uh, 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 organized portfolio, if you would, of Jesus Christ. But he writes from a Jewish perspective. Zion presently is walking through John. Some difficult material because you have to be able to set yourself aside from your thoughts and your soul and what is speaking and take on, if you would, the mindset of God and what he is saying. Uh, John speaks in a way and brings out points that it only comes to the revelation of the Holy Spirit. So in dealing with these mindsets here of the gospel, as we are here in America with influences from all and different nations of people where we have become somewhat, if you would, a melting pot. So then you have a different, uh, uh, lots of uh, different religious aspects and, and sayings and, and beliefs being abroad, uh, brought about. Now, what we want to do is focus on the fact that the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ went back to his father. The comforter has come and we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now remember, God does not overthrow the will of a man. He allows us to make our own choices. We can ask the Holy Spirit for direction, and he will certainly answer and give us the direction. After the giving of the direction, you have to have the mindset 
of the word of God that will allow you to receive the direction. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Now, if you want to bring about foreign gods and, and foreign thought processes and have that to infiltrate your body experience, your mind, your mind is your soul. If you allow that, then the Holy Spirit is not going to overcome it and say, oh, well, that's not what they really want to do. So uh, I'm going to change and put them in a better position. That is not how the Holy Spirit works. He will bring up the word of God to you. He'll bring up the scripture and you'll hear it in your belly. You'll hear it in your mind. You will feel it in your flesh, what God is saying. But we have to be yielded vessels, bodies to the will of God concerning the matters. Now, Jesus Christ, his earthly name was Yeshua, meaning Savior in his name. That's why we call on the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why we call on his name, Yeshua, his name that was given as the Savior of the world, the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christo. That comes from Greek interpretation. Remember I told you? You want to be mindful of the writer. You want to be mindful of the Septuagint, the uh, interpretation of the Hebraic experience of the word of God. Search the scriptures that you need not be ashamed, but to rightly divide the word of God. To say the spirit of the Lord is upon me, there is no ill effect, but I want you to note that not only is he on you, but he's in you. That's what the mothers used to say. They come by the altar as we were tarrying for the Holy Spirit, laying in wait. That's what tarrying means, to lay in wait and to lament and to cry out to God that his spirit would come and fill us. That's why I'm saying, tell the spirit, fill me, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Fill me to my break. Feel me until I am overflowed. I'm dealing with your spirit. I'm dealing with your soul. The soul of a man is in enmity against God. No, you don't want to do. We come into a rebellious situation in the garden. What was that rebellion? The seed of rebellion being released. What are we dealing with today? The seed of rebellion. People in countries armies in countries, spies in country, illegal governments in countries, foreign governments taking over legalized governments in other countries. Why? Because we are a rebellious people. Why? The release of rebellion in the garden. But I want you to get the understanding of what you are dealing with. Jesus, his name points to the very purpose from which he came into the world, which was to save sinners like you and me, to save us and to give us a foundational concept of the gospel so we could grab hold and we could walk this thing through. The fulfilling of Isaiah will be the return of Jesus Christ, the catching up, the gathering of the saints to go back to be with our Father. There's a new heaven and there's a new earth that's coming about. Revelation talks about. So I want you to grasp it. The, the Bible, the, the covenant of God, uh, rather than be old or new, it all works together. It's not like it's one part. This is the old, you don't do that anymore. This is the new, you don't do that. No, no, no. It all works succinctly together. No, we don't kill cows and calves. You don't have to do that anymore. Why? Because the Savior, Jesus Christ, he came and he shed his blood on Calvary. He was a perfect 
sacrifice for the sins of the world. So what did he do? He came and shed his blood at Calvary, and then he saved and preached and, and, and helped us get ourselves into position to receive the salvation that he brought when he went to the cross. He said, no man can take my life. He said, I lay it down for this. He came into the world. Help me, Holy Ghost. He came into the world that he would save you and he would save me. Oh, what wretched, undone people we are and were. But the spirit of the Lord indwells in us. The spirit keeps us from lying. The spirit of God tells us no, no, and slaps us on the head and say, no, we don't steal because we are a holy people. What does that mean? It means that I'm set aside my lifestyle. I have given over to God into fasting and praying and going before the Lord in lamenting, walking according to the scripture, the best I know how, and studying to get better and great understanding. So when the prophet wrote up, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, that's where he was at that time. But now we say the spirit of the Lord is in us. The divinity of God, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Let me move on. So his name points to the very purpose of who he is and what he was about here in the earth. Isaiah and Matthew, he was that that it might be fulfilled. It indicates the inevitability, the inevitability of the fulfillment of the word of the prophet. That's what the scriptures are about. The fulfilling, it tells us the prophets would have loved a bit a part of today as to where we are. The, the, the prophets long to see what we see. The prophets long to be a part of this move of God. But I thank God that he brought us on the scene at this time so that we could be a part of the move of God. So when you read, watch the writers that you read. Get understanding as to where the writer is coming from. Some of us buy books because people tell us, but you know nothing of the history of the writer. Whatever those books say, that is what is in the writer's spirit. And if the spirit don't be of God, put it down. Put it down and set, let the Holy Spirit teach you. Yeah, yes, because it'll tell you. It tells me, yeah. It tells me, no. And, and sometimes I still want to read it like, uh-uh. No, no, no. Because see, if you take it in to your spirit, understand this. If you take it into your spirit, I talked to you last week about your spirit, your soul, the Holy Spirit and your fleshly body, how they all must be congruent, how they all must work together. And if you work outside the Holy Spirit that indwells in you, you have no covering. You have no protection. I've seen people get up, uh, prophets, uh, 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 preachers, get up and minister and knew what they were saying. It was not from God. It was out of their experience. It came from their soul and what they thought, but it was not of the word of God. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, it teaches us how to measure a word that you are given from a preacher. He says, oh, a prophet, if that word, you cannot find the consistency from it, from the word of God, don't you receive it? Because there is pr prophetic impartation from the spirit of God that helps you in your journey and along your way. And it must be a prophetic call from God and a holy man, a holy woman that's been sent 
from God to bring you a word, not something somebody told them or where they got it from. And you will know it because when the Holy Spirit abides within you, then you have the spirit of discernment and you can Fish it out, if you would, what be true and what be the lie. If it doesn't measure with the word of God, as you see the prophets speak, and from Old Testament to New Testament, the word lines up with that that was spoken by the prophet. And these, we're talking about thousands of years ago now, when AD, 70 AD, when Jerusalem was taken down. What? You say, I'm saying you got to walk this word. It says line upon line and precept upon precept. Back to looking at your soul, looking at your spirit, looking at your body, your soul and the Holy Spirit comes together in your mortal being. The divinity of God comes within you and it abides after this and the Holy Ghost have come, then you shall have power, power, how people know who you are, can tell you uh, 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 about yourself and what the Lord is saying. It is through the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about this mess and Sue saying it and all that's witchcraft. And the saints, we don't deal in no witchcraft. We rebuke, that's our enemy. Try it and see if it be of God. And if not of God, cut it off. Your soul is what we are doing. Isaiah, he indicates the inevitability of the fulfillment of the word of the prophet. What are you saying? I'm telling you the sign. Isaiah speaks it. And then all these eons later, Jesus comes on the scene, speaks the same word in the temple, in the synagogue. Isn't it ironic that he was called in his in, in the synagogue within his family sphere and area to read the word of God. And he tells them, he says, on this day, this word has been fulfilled. His job description is laid out. There were many who were angry with him uh, in the towns. I mean, they, they, they were upset that he would identify himself as the Messiah. They said, others said that he never identified himself. Yes, he did. He said, on this day, this scripture has been fulfilled as he stands there on the pulpit. And look at it and say, uh, this, that scripture been fulfilled because I uh, pat yourself. See, it's been fulfilled in me. Yeah, the spirit of the Lord is in me and the spirit of the Lord is causing me to hang on in here. Even though we are in the time that we are in, I can hang on. Some are saying depression. Does that spirit lurk? Yes, it does. But you know, you can rise above it. All you have to do is call on the spirit of God, the divinity that rests with in you. Uh, that spirit is lurking mightily in the land. Domestic violence, if you would. It was at an all-time high before this uh, pandemic. Now it's like off the chain. But the spirit of the Lord that dwells in me, I can rise above it. I can prosper even at this time, because God has a call on my life. Now, Jesus, he asked the disciples, and I'm about to close because I got more. But Jesus, he asked the disciples. He said, who do men, listen, he said, who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? Peter was the one who spoke up. Peter, who's going to deny him at the cross. <laughs> Peter, who walked out on the water and went to Jesus. He, he, he got a song. He didn't get quite all the way there. But he was on his way. What am I telling you? Sometimes in this journey, you may go underwater. But you know what? 
the Holy Spirit will bring you back up and take you right on over to the, to the landing, to the dry land. The Spirit of the Lord that dwells in you. Peter said this. He said, uh, 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 the spiritual insight, the spiritual insight that he was given. He said, what did he say? That you are the son of the living God. You're the son of the living God. Now, there's a lot of gods that were around there, but the only living God that you can point to to feed you, to clothe you, to deal with your mental instability, to deal with your health issues, to deal with your soul issues, you know? And I just want to hit that point. A lot of times we have been led to believe by presumption that soulless issues are negative and they are issues that we have to deal with and there's no good part of the soul. No, 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 no. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Huh? The soul that sinneth. But if you are a soul that does not sin in the time of the getting away, however it should be for you, your soul want to be in congruency with your spirit and your body, that for God I live and for God I die. The soul, the will, your own mind to say, for God I live and for God I'll die. Your soul, so there's the good part. I know we think of the negativity all the time. No, 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 no. Those are issues that we have to have in control. I'm a diabetic, so I eat all the cake and candy that I get. No, 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 no. That's you and your mind, your soul that decided that that's what you want to do. No, no, no. You got to rebuke the devil. You got to rebuke him on every hand and every corner and every way and present your mind, your body. You have control over it before God, a holy vessel. Huh? the Holy Spirit that is divine, that lies within you, taking it back, going to the Father. He said, the soul that sinner shall die. But what about the soul that's in good standing? You see where I'm coming from? Because we are people who listen at other people instead of studying and looking and breaking it out and breaking it down for ourselves. The soul that sent him, indicative of the soul that is righteous. Help me, Holy Ghost. Give us revelation, Lord, to understand what you said. Peter here, he said that you are the son of the living God. In other, other words, his spiritual insight said to him, he understood the relationship between, between the Godhead, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and the divinity that lied within him, that he and his father were one. You can't divide them. You can't separate them. Jesus said, if you know me, you know my father. You can't know me and not know my father. If you come to me, you got to know my father. That's the only way you can come. I heard one of our great pastors say, some folk will sit up in church, you be preaching your guts out, and they be playing with babies. What? The spirit of God is not in dwelling because the Holy Ghost is like a magnetic draw. You can be sitting in, in, in church and somebody's hands uh, go up. And the next thing you know, your hands going up and, and somebody's feet will go up and, and the musician will hit that key. And next thing you know, the Holy Spirit and folk just running around. Why? Because the Holy Spirit on the inside of you won't let you be still. When the Spirit of God is moving, 
Ah, you can't be still. You, 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 you got to move. Have you ever been in service and you had a prophet speak and then another prophet got up and they were in unity? Because of the Holy Spirit, it'll cause you to do right. It'll cause you to speak. You will utter utterances that you on a natural basis don't know yourself. Dealing with the spirit of God is in me. Just pat yourself on the, on your chest this morning and say the spirit of God is in me. The spirit of God is in me. And I'm going to have to get out of here. The last point, last point. The son is one in the same nature as his father. Do you know that it is the male chromosome that determines the sex of a child? It's determined by the male chromosome. Me and my father are one. Be blessed. Go to YouTube. This message will be up, and then you can pick up the next part uh, in next week. I thank God for you. I pray for you now, for the backslider, that you would come home. Zion Worship Center is a safe place. It is home. It is what Jesus Christ designed for you. 2131 Pine. Click into our social media sites. Click in to our prayer. Click in to our pastor, Building Soldiers, Building Souls. Prayer every morning with Dr. Kadisha Henry, uh, Elder Frederick Williams. Prayer on Tuesday night with Minister Robin White. I pray all day, any day, any time. All you have to do, if you see my media sites, the question is, how can I pray for you? I don't even want you to do no work. You send me the prayer request, and I'm going to pray for you. In the meantime, until you get strong enough to do it on your own behalf, I'm going to walk with you in it and through it. May the Lord bless you real good, and we'll see you again real soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.